Hello, everybody. Welcome to yet another uh, edition of Paradigm Shift in Educational Comedy. And um, we're here with uh, Vinnie Eastwood, Katarina Edwards, Richard Hamilton, and um, Kristen Meyer was going to join us, but I think she got busy with something else. Well, you know, it's okay. Life happens. Um, I also promised uh, somebody that I would announce something on here. And yes, Katerina Edwards Roy, Katerina Roy, you know, my bad, I'm caught in habit here. Yes, she is married to Paul Roy. Anyway, um, I promised to mention that I was talking with Lucy Rose um, earlier, and apparently, and I, I didn't know this was going on, but there's a lot of... Um, women who are in desperate need of some empowerment in her, you know, physical in-person reality, and uh, she likes to get them together periodically and, you know, put the laptop up, and they all watch videos and stuff, and um, they have two pieces of content in mind when they do this, um, the the paradigm shift in educational comedy stuff and um, Max Egan stuff. So um, I didn't know anybody was doing that, so I thought that was actually rather cool. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they've, they've heard all of us, so I think that's, that's pretty slick. Um, but today, um, we've got Vinny on because, um, we're going to talk about professionals and, um, what that word actually means. Um, people act as if professional is just like, a, almost godlike authority that we have to bow down and worship and whatever they say is truth because, well, they have this magical talisman, this piece piece of paper that, um, you know, it's got writing on it and what, whatever is written down there is supposedly the truth of the universe. Where really the word professional, if we look at the word and separate it, profess, which means to make claim, and the suffix chanel, which just means the act thereof. So basically if someone professes and makes claim, it must be the almighty truth of the universe. Um, which is why I guess politicians are professionals, because they profess and make claim to a lot of untruthful lies that they pass off as the truth. So um, I love Vinny's little rants about what professionals uh, really are, and the last time we had him on, he went into a, a bit of that. So yes, um, your, your thoughts, Vinny? Well, uh, the way I look at it, the world's currently run by professionals. How's that working out for you? Not well. Yeah. Unless, uh, unless think, of course, uh, you think corruption and greed and genocide and war is wonderful, which I don't, so I don't think it's... Well, so long as it's, you know, not amateur corruption and greed, I mean, my God, you you, <laughs> you got to just up your game here, bro. <laughs> and... <coughs> I've been uh, working quite hard uh, in my own amateurish way to do everything I can to expose scumbaggery and have a laugh while I'm doing it. And uh, but that's not just, very per that's not very professional of you, Benny. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> ideally, uh, but you know what I've noticed along the way is a lot of people do also want to expose scumbaggery, but they have this mindset that they have to do it perfectly, right? They have to do this uh, this uh, television show or this radio show in this exact way when you just spend that much time on it. And if they release it and then they look at it and they don't like it, they, they delete it off and, and that kind of thing. Whereas my very unprofessional way of doing things is go to a protest, do a video. If the video is crap, make a video, better video next time at the next protest, you know? And uh, eventually you've got 3,000 videos and uh, more subscribers than the mainstream media YouTube channels in your country. Almost all of them combined. <laughs> totally, totally. I, I'd like I'd like Katarina to speak on that right now because that's kind of one of one of the things she's uh, been facing as far as putting up YouTube videos and making productions and stuff. The the mental malware dichotomy of oh before I can go forward it needs to be this way and it needs to be perfect and done in this fashion and coming into the realization that really just you being you and putting yourself out there you know fuck perfection um, you'll you'll improve your platform over time but in the meantime it's okay to begin at the beginning 
but people are, they think that they have to already be at their destination in order to begin on their journey, and it's neurotic, but we're programmed to be neurotic Nazis. That's what the educational, I mean, indoctrinational system does. So, mm. Katarina. Well, thank you, Dave. Ahead. You pretty much just said everything I was going to say, so you answered your own <laughs> question. Well, an example I can cite is my uh, my former uh, co-host on the Vinny Eastwood show, like maybe... Uh, five years ago, I think he uh, he left the show, and um, he was talking at the time about uh, doing a thing called uh, Infomatrix uh, uh, in New Zealand, Infomatrix.com. And um, he says, "I got to do it perfectly. I got to do it right, and I got to do uh, got to do it absolutely 100%. You know, the the, the right way. It's got to be good. It's got to be good." And uh, I met him a, uh, about a week or two ago, and um, I said, "So what what are you doing now, bro?" He goes, I'm, uh, I'm working in a cafe, and I've still got a whole bunch of projects in my head and stuff like that, and it's, it's like, dude, you just spent five years. What have you got to show for it? Mm-hmm. You know, um, yeah. it's the yeah. bravery, just trusting in yourself to just go out and do it three sheets to the wind. What it, whatever comes, wh- wherever the chips fall, just take responsibility for it. But the first thing that you have to do is just trust your instincts and trust yourself. Otherwise, you uh, are perpetually in this sort of um, third-party perspective where you're trying to look at everybody um, as as how they perceive you, right? And it's the opposite way. You're supposed to look at everybody and perceive them your own way, and you're supposed to act like yourself. And I notice this very poignantly whenever I've gotten up to speak at, say, um, heavily socialist or, or heavily right-wing sort of uh, party meetings or, or something like this, and I want to say something conspiratorial. I try to tone it down, to dumb it down, so, so to speak, or try to go after like a, a few isolated little thingies. And I found I get tongue-tied because if I can't express myself in the way that I normally do and I'm trying to please everybody else, I can't speak or think clearly. <laughs> That's yeah. happened exactly to me as well. Yeah, I've had that same exact thing happen. Yeah. And it's um, when you're comfortable, um, ultimately, uh, in front of the microphone, in front of the audience, that you really come into your own. And that's why it's called coming into your own. You know, it's like somebody comes up and they're like, oh, we're going to save your life. This is going to be good. We're going to teach you how to do this, that, and the other. We're going to give you this education. It's only going to cost you $50,000 in debt that you'll never be able to pay (laughs) off. It'll It'll be a great education. My, uh, my mate Daryl, um, I talked to him the other day, and I said to him, bro, how many how many years have you been studying? And he goes, oh, I've been studying for seven years. Oh, okay. And uh, how much debt have you got there? Uh, about $50,000. And uh, how much equipment have you got where you can actually apply all those video and audio editing skills uh, to? And he goes, well, I've got none of it. So I go, <laughs> well, well, what what if? Just open your mind real wide. It's just what if <laughs> you got yourself into debt and bought a whole bunch of equipment that you could actually do? How much equipment would 50 grand get you? And he goes, well, I'd be totally set up. I'd virtually have my own studio. And I go, exactly. <laughs> you know, like prioritizing uh, spending money on an intangible education for, uh, that is uh, based upon the use of equipment that you can't afford because you paid for an education how to use it. I say, yeah. get the equipment first and use it. There's your fucking <laughs> education. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really, it's, it's just like the idea that, oh, you... In order for the human brain to be capable of processing information, you need to be physically sitting in an institution called a school. Otherwise, if you're anywhere else, then then you know your your neural networks are just going going to lock up and freeze, and you'll be unable to learn unless unless the almighty gods of of media and government and everything are have you in this physical building that will magically allow those neural networks to unlock and process, but otherwise, nope, sorry, if you're not in a physical building, well, your brain can't learn anything. Then it's like, what the fuck? And as How far many? as what you were saying saying about, you know, the whole, this needs to be a certain way, I've noticed that in both the, the so-called truth and the spiritual movements, too, especially within internet radio, it's starting to almost get like similar to the mainstream whereas before they were like oh who cares about you know um 
uh, professionalism, who cares about, you know, aligning with the status quo, who cares about ratings, this, that, and the other. It's more important to just speak your truth. And then not too horribly long ago, and I'm not going to name names or drop names or anything like that, but I'm just going to say that there was there was somebody within um, within radio who was who was uh, basically um, commenting to me privately about PSEC and you know me and and Katarina and Rich and everybody and all what we're doing. And this guy was like, "Well, Dave, you just you have no you have no content. Um, you know, you 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 need some content." And I'm like. Uh, no content, really. I've got this whole YouTube channel full of stuff, this, that. So what, how do I not have content? It's like, well, well, you know, you're, you're just, you're, you're not, and I'm summarizing this, you're not spick, sticking to mainstream, you know, guidelines, and, and there's ratings to consider, and, the, and p people need to be kept interested, and this needs to be in this specific format, and that needs to be this, and, and this anal format here, and this strict protocol there. And this was a guy who was pre, who was who would previously be getting on air saying, you know, none of that matters. It just matters speaking your truth and being yourself and, and the human awakening, and now it's like, well, Dave, you know, you're you don't have any content because of blah blah blah. And then he went so so far as to tell me, and and you know, like Katarina doesn't need you to babysit her anymore. She, uh, she doesn't need a guru. She can fly free on her own. This person apparently has no idea of the understanding that someone like me and Katarina could actually, honest to God, be friends, and that she doesn't work for me or beneath me. We work with each other as equals. We have a deep, close, legitimate friendship, and we also work together on projects. And in that stuffy, professional, oh, ratings are more important type of thinking, these ideas just cannot be understood by people. It's just like, friends? That can't happen. What, do you think we're humins? No, we're robots <laughs> in a machine. Yeah. We can't well, have it's, human it's about... relations. It's not about doing it as good as someone else. It's doing the best that you can do, right? Like, I, mm. I listen to uh, a lot of other shows, watch, watch a lot of things and comedians and, and, and what have you, and I allow them to inspire me and I allow them to uh, uh, show me different things and different paths that I can go down and, and search out. And speaking, thinking, talking... You know, the whole nine yards of it, whenever you're in talk radio, it's about insight. And you sit there every single day, like, I, like I've been doing, you know, five, six, seven days a week for like five years. And you get better as each show progresses, only just a little bit better. It's kind of like a watching a child grow. You don't notice the, uh, the difference from one day to the next, but if you don't see them for six months, they're very, very much larger, right? So you go back mm -hmm. and, and uh, listen to my 2010 archives, and then you listen to, say, a show I did yesterday, and you can see a uh, massive improvement. Now, it doesn't mean you, you have, I had anybody telling me what to do. It just means that I can listen to myself from an objective standpoint and think, hmm, I can improve, tweak that little bit here. It's what my, uh, my somewhat fabulous former producer used to call plussing. Whenever you go to give somebody feedback about a show they're doing, you don't give them negatives. You don't say you shouldn't be doing that, you shouldn't be doing that. What you do is you do pluses. You go, you should uh, do a little bit more of that. You can improve on that little uh, uh, puppy right there. And what it does is it creates a positive multi-spectrum path for you to develop on and evolve as a radio show host. And if you're very concerned about it, uh, overly concerned about it, you become afraid of what you'll say. And that is not a good thing uh, for a radio show host to be. They need to be courageous. They need to be brave. They need to speak the truth regardless of what consequences there are for it because totally. the radio show host knows that not speaking the truth has far dire consequences than just repeating it, you know? Exactly. That's why it was such a shock when this person, um, you know, approached me like that because... My previous impression of them is that, you know, they were the cr courageous type that was just going for the truth. And, um, you know, within that, that incident with this person, they also went so far as to say that, you know, um, the people that, you know, some of the people that I've had on that um, were just expressing about, 
you know, their own shifts and their own dichotomies and dealing, you know, dealing with life and, and that, um, you know, they, they've been inspired to, to face and clear these things and to continue to improve and, you know, not let society get them down and so on and so forth. He, he proceeded to tell me that that is whining. Oh, these people, they are whining. Yet he's had exactly uh, the same, you know, sorts of, of people on, you know, what he's done that, you know, have gone on, you know, similar rants, like, you know, gone on all the societal dichotomies and their own internal mal malware and then stating what they've learned that, you know, despite all this, um, you know, this, this has taught me to become more empowered in this area and, you know, to not to not give up and keep going and so on and so forth. So he was always kind of, you know, an advocate of that sort of can expression. I, can I say something here? Here's sure. the problem of putting people on a pedestal. Every single person that you put on that pedestal is a human being that is inherently mm -hmm. flawed. And the, the, a day will come when they fall from that pedestal that you put them up on and you're the one who actually gets crushed when they come tumbling down, not them. <laughs> <laughs> so don't put them. So don't put them up. All right. So, you know, you uh, think, think about it kind of like a grass in a field. Does a cow favor one particular patch of grass, or does he just eat from the whole field as he as he comes across it and takes what he needs as he eats? You know. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Take your inspiration, take your motivations from people, but don't invest in the personality, don't invest in the person, because every single person that I've admired or uh, really tried to emulate has wound up being a pretty terrible person in a lot of ways, and uh, it's very disenfranchising, demotivating, mm -hmm. and depressing. Uh, so the way I got around that is no longer having a stake in those personalities at all, barely even listening to them and simply acknowledging that they influenced me, they gave me some inspiration and I'm taking what I want from it. Even a desert of lies can yield a grain of truth. Exactly. I, I agree completely and, you know, I do my best to ignore the messenger and focus on the message, like, you know, and the fact that I'm, that I'm able to do that tends to upset people because I'll quote Hitler just as readily as I'll quote Jesus, and 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 they're like, oh my God, how horrible that was Hitler. You need to shun that information. He was such a terrible guy. And I'm like, look, I will I will quote Hitler and Jesus in the same sentence to make a unified point if I damn well feel like it, because information is disinformation. Like when I tell people that Hitler said. Um, the beautiful thing about the totalitarian state is that it forces those who fear to emulate it. I'm like, well, I don't think it's a beautiful thing, but Hitler was correct that that is how that particular form of, you know, MK altering and psychological abuse works. That when you when you beat a person down with that enough and they go into this fear and terror, they get they get reactive and defensive, and therefore become the exact same mentality as, you know, the system that's that's beating them down. It's a meme. So that's all Hitler was saying. But then people were like, oh, well, it's Hitler who said it, so we need to ignore that because Hitler was evil and, and blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's just like, what? I tell people I personally think that if Hitler had stated openly and officially that the sky is blue, that we'd all be saying that it's purple um, and that, you know, anybody who says it's blue is anti-Semitic. Oh, and Kristen is calling. Let's see if we can, we can pipe her Welcome. in. Um, to accept, press 1. Yeah. To send a voicemail, press 2. One. Hey, Kristen, you're on live. You're on live. Hello. Hey, Kristen. Hello. Can everybody hear Kristen? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, Kristen, can you hear everybody else? Um, I can only hear you so far. Oh, she's coming in through Skype, isn't she? Yeah. She's trying to get her to come through Google Plus. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's that that's weird because I've I've never had had that error before. Um, uh, right uh, now, Dave, well, you just the... had it. You just had it with me, bro. Do you remember other, how we solved it by other, getting me to call other, into Google Plus because nothing else would work? Is the memory you, not you, working for today? You no? inter you, inter you interrupted me mid sentence, Stu. I was gonna say never had that before except for Vinny, but you kind of cut me off before I could say anything. But I've cut you off too in the past, so fair is fair. But anyway, um, yeah. So 
pretty you much this is for each day. other. This is this is the first day in the experience in my experience with this. So, you know, September first, twenty fifteen is the first day that I have ever experienced this because prior to that, you know, going both ways with this connection used to always work. Um, Kristen, is there any way that if I get, I were to give you a Google Hangout link that you would be able to connect into that right now? Um, I would be I'd be willing to try it. I'm at my dad's house right now, so the internet connection is nearly non-existent. Um, but I'll try it out, and I will say it was quite funny just now because I'm assuming it was either Rich or Vinny interrupting you, and um. <laughs> It was Zoom. I heard you it stutter was over and over again. Of course it was me. Yeah, I heard you stutter <laughs> over and over again, and it, it was like, it sounded like an audio glitch because it sounded the exact same each time you tried to say what you were saying. It was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, All right, so uh, I'm going to disconnect you here, Kristen, and I'm going to give you the the uh, Google Hangout link, and just make sure you're, because you're on such a poor connection, make sure your video is disabled, it's audio only, and hopefully, Dave. God willing, will uh, be fine. So I'm going to disconnect you All now right. and give you the link. Okay. Now, in future, Dave, technical difficulties work like this. Hey, we can't connect you via Skype, and we've just had this problem before, so here's the link to the Google Plus. Conversation over. Um, uh, so, you know. But if this is the first time having that glitch, bro, and, and uh, also this is another element that's very interesting when you're talking about live radio, because it only happens in live radio. Technical glitches, you know, dropouts, pauses in speech, people not being able to connect properly. I think the uh, the worst time I ever had it and um, was when I interviewed Tila Tequila, right? There's like, I don't know, nearly half a dozen things that need to go perfectly that you need to hear you, you need to hear them. There needs to be a connection with the studio back and forth and they can hear you and see you and all of that kind of jazz. And uh, all six of those things, ranging from the internet to the audio, to the uh, the microphones, to the network, to uh, her cell phone, her landline, her Skype, all of them got uh, were getting down. Right? It was it was unbelievable <laughs> um, hacking what that was going on. And then dig this: my internet service provider Slingshot had a complete outage right in the middle of the show for about 45 minutes. Uh, you actually you did you explain you explain this on the last the last time you were on so yes a uh, good point valid point um I think it's be, it's because you, you you came on that the trolls of the universe are like let's let's fuck with Dave because he's well, got no, video no, on. it's the um it's <laughs> what they call uh targeted individuals uh, if you if you interview uh, Dr John Hall about this it was so eye opening bro like it's actually really cheap to mess with people. You can there's there's backdoors built into almost all the uh, the networks and everything like that. The uh, the CIA had these front companies and investing in uh, a lot of tech firms as well as uh, national security agency has been uh, taking down networks periodically for like what they call routine maintenance, where they're building uh, backdoors into all the internet service providers. So everybody's essentially tappable through this uh, system. It depends whether or not you you draw their attention. And uh, what he found was that there's uh, a very small investment uh, on behalf of any Intel uh, community op to stalk somebody 24-7 and to mess with all of their calls, to uh, have actual technology that you can beam a signal at somebody's head and it broadcasts at the exact same frequency with which your neurons broadcast. So it sounds like there's somebody talking inside your head. And uh, there's these people called targeted individuals, and they, they find it quite funny sometimes because sometimes these guys are just talking about what when their shift changes and what they're going to do for lunch and all of that kind of stuff because they stalk you in threes, you know, three eight-hour shifts over a 24-hour period simply with a rental car that only uh, is I don't know, a couple of hundred uh, US dollars a day. They employ uh, criminals, homeless people, and, and things like this to do it. doesn't require a whole lot of skill. And one person at a laptop who has access to the uplink and the satellite, so they can watch what you're doing uh, via satellite, more or less for free, through their own network. And this is mind control weaponry, right? What they call technotronic 
weaponry. And the reason why they're doing this to ordinary people, and sometimes, you know, people have got something important to say, is experimenting, right? Because if you've got a new weapon, you need to test it so that you mm -hmm. can prepare it for the battlefield usage. Could you imagine what you could do if all of a sudden you could make all the enemy soldiers hear somebody's voice in their head or hear their own commander and their own commander's voice say, no, 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 everybody drop your weapons, we're surrendering, or, or, or something like that, you know? <laughs> the, the possibilities are endless here. And imagine what yeah. television would be like with the utilization of this technology. <laughs> Man, well, I really like well, this episode that tells well, me. Well, are, are you? Do you always have these uh, these sorts of uh, interference problems, or or what? Because I I don't have these problems until you know, like somebody like you comes on. So, how much do you get stalked? Uh, I in the physical, not not at all. Um, I don't get stalked on. Uh, they can't stalk me on social media because I block everybody who I don't like. Um, and I have a very, very, very long block list. It takes a long time to scroll all the way to the bottom of the list of people that I've blocked over the years for being dicks. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so a as a result, um, I don't really experience almost any kind of harassment. Occasionally there are technical glitches or whatever, but uh, most of the time it's... Uh, due to, you know, uh, mistakes, failures, uh, real just uh, technological gl glitches and things like that. And uh, I'm reminded of a, a film uh, documentary called The Control Room about how Al Jazeera was treated in the Western media. And one of the guys was Saudi Arabian, and he was laughing, just sitting there laughing. He says, everybody in Saudi Arabia thinks anything that goes wrong is an Israeli conspiracy, all right? If a water main bursts in Damascus, it's an Israeli conspiracy instead of our own incompetence. <laughs> and, uh, and that was something that I was uh, starting to think about the other day. How many of these glitches are deliberate sabotage, and how many of them are just me being an idiot? Yep. Being well, anyway, the possibility. Um, Kristen, Kristen was here for uh, a short a little bit. I don't know if the connection was fully successful, but then she, like, dropped. Um, so I'm not sure how well she actually connected in or, or anything like that. But um, anyway... Um, who, who, Google Plus isn't connected yet, bro. Um, it was, but then it dropped out. I mean, oh, I, it, 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 it was just momentarily, but then... Boom, you know, but um, I'll her getting message with the uh, the link again, and she'll um she'll pop oh, right no, back. She, oh, right? she's no, she's she's got it in her Facebook, so I mean she could just reclick that as many times as she wants. But anyway, um, getting back on the on the topic um at hand about um about professionals, um most people don't don't really look at the way you know words are and the real meanings of words, like um. You know, again, if you break down the word professional, it's the root word is profess, and Chanel being being the act thereof. And as we can see, you know, uh, whether you look at the politics of the news media or, you know, people so-called teaching stuff in school or no matter what field or industry or whatever, all these professionals are always professing, aren't they? And we're just supposed to take that as the truth. Like, I'm professing this, and... You know, and so on and so on. So you just have to blindly believe me because oh, okay. I have this piece of paper that says you absolutely must press, blindly press believe one. me. Just send a voicemail. And um, we're apparently Kristen's calling press back press on press Skype. One. Hello, Kristen. Hi. We oh, we no, saw she's you. Going through the Skype again, isn't she? Yeah, she is. We saw you. Um, uh, we saw you on Google. Um, very briefly there. Um, that apparently didn't work. Yeah, I didn't, so I thought I would um, try and call here again and see if I could get the audio, but it's not happening. Yeah. Anymore. So. Um, I'm going to you see have to you I have to go and uh, download a little um, an app, uh, the the Google Plus Talk app. Uh, Sorry to interrupt again. Yeah, she she knows that, and that's you know that's kind of. Uh, what she does here. Um, 
Um, okay, um, I'm trying to see if maybe I can adjust some other things to, to get this to work better. Can, so everybody can hear Kristen. It's just that Kristen can't hear everybody, right? What, just tell Kristen to, to make a statement for a couple of minutes so we can at least listen to her on the broadcast now. I mean, you know, we'll be able to hear it. She won't be able to hear her responses, though. Kristen, were you able to hear Vinny say anything? No, Kristen? not currently. Weird. Vinny, can you hear her? Yeah. Okay, he can hear you. This <laughs> is so strange. Yeah. yeah I'm is. sitting here with my with my face and my hands just going, Oh my god. Really weird. <laughs> it's it, it really is freaking weird. Um let me let me try something here. Um Vinny try saying uh, saying something. Oh my god, this is the worst radio show ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Um, Kristen, could, you, Kristen, could can you hear we, can that? We just, can we just ignore her, you know, and, and, and get on with the show? I haven't heard, um, I haven't heard Katarina talk or, or, or any anybody else in the uh, in the room for that matter. Well, Rich ta or Katarina talked a bit. Maybe Rich could say some stuff. Testing one, two, three. Anybody there? Coming through, uh, silent but clear. My browser keeps dying on me for whatever reason. It'll just keep cutting out. And well, I figured it was worth a shot. Um. So, Rich, go ahead, bro. Oh, okay. Um. We're waiting on you, man. Well, what do I say? Um. Well, my view on professionals, I guess, considering that's what we've been talking about. I've been, I've been listening, but, you know, mainly listening. Um, my real view on professionals is... Oh, you might have to speak up a little bit more or put the microphone on your headset just in front of your mouth. So that's where well, it picks up the audio from. Or... Rich, can you hear me? We're having severe technical difficulties here because I'm hearing Kristen partially speaking through Google Hangout, which is kind of weird. You're jumbled. I'm jumbled. Okay, so guys, I'm sorry. This is like the stupidest thing ever. This is I a know. fucking Google It's like, Google what Hangout. the hell are we doing? Yeah, this is not a fucking radio show. Going, you know? Google <laughs> Hangout. It's supposed to be crappy and crackly and just not super professional. We're talking about not being professional here and just like being able to just be okay with that. And I love the cosmic the irony time. here. <laughs> Lack of professional. Like, the difference yeah. between... Uh, being unprofessional and just being unwatchable. <laughs> right. <laughs> unwatchable. But honestly, I've done Google Hangouts like this before, and people still fucking watch them. I'm, I'm being honest. Like, they will break <laughs> oh, maybe for the first couple there. minutes they do, bro. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's one hit. Yes. Yes. <laughs> It sounds like it sounds like the jumbled up board collective. I'm hearing all these different voices going off at once. It's kind of freaking me out. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The that's, the technotronic, that's the technotronic weapon repro. <laughs> <laughs> technotronic weaponry live and PSEC. <laughs> Brought to you by Sia. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> uh, anybody ever see um, uh, Joy Camp? Uh, no. Oh, oh you man. definitely have to go see those those guys, man. It's, it's freaking hilarious, uh, especially the uh, series on the uh, the conspiracy guy. And uh, it's kind of like you know when you walk around and, and and you're into conspiracies and nobody else is. So everybody else just lives their life and they, they kind of just see all the stuff around them. It's perfectly fine. But a conspiracy theorist is usually the person in the, cor in the corner of the room who's just telling everybody what's in the stuff that they're drinking and what's in the stuff that they're eating, what's in the stuff that oh, they're shit. inhaling, what's in, this, what's in the air and, and, and everything like that. <laughs> and everybody just ignores you and just goes back to what they're doing. And yeah. uh, there's a whole series of conspiracy guy videos like that. It's just... It's just frickin' hilarious, bro. Because yeah, <laughs> it's exactly the same thing that happens to all of us, isn't it? We kind of get pushed to the outside, sort of like a, um, a discarded shopping trolley. That's a pretty morbid perspective, but, I mean, I guess it kind of is... Hap it does happen like that sometimes. Yeah, well, the further society drifts from the truth, the more people will hate those who speak it. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm, right? Exactly. Especially if it's an extremely unfortunate truth, such as you're not free, you're actually a slave to ruthless criminal sociopathic banking scum. And you go, ah, oh, man, that's a bit of a downer, bro. Why do you have to be so negative? I don't want to be hearing about the fact that I'm a slave. But it's you know, I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll, I'll take it to the next level. In fact, we are so absolutely and utterly completely free that we can choose to abdicate that freedom and choose to be slaves by insisting that we have these one percent minority psychopathic babysitters rule over us. Because if you know, if we weren't giving our consent then, you know, what could they possibly do? It's like, you know... Um, they like, could well, shoot you, kill like, you, like, torture what, you. The, <laughs> there's a whole lot of saying, things I can do. Um, I'm saying it, with, if they did not have the consent of the masses, you know, like, what could one idiot with a mustache like Hitler have done without the support of everyone who supported Hitler? You know what I'm um, saying? Probably getting financed by Rothschild bankers and things like that would have helped a, a little bit, you know, with uh, or, uh, who painted, who paid to print all the flags and get all the uniforms made and who poured in trillions of dollars into the German economy which, so we could which, build up all which, of its industry. Which, it was all American money. So yeah, which, you know, if, if, one, which if the masses, which if the masses weren't choosing of their own free will to be complacent and drink the Kool Aid, all that would have amounted to nothing. Just either that, like or you've needed. got sophisticated propaganda techniques that were tried and tr- and tested and extremely effective at getting people to abandon their reasoning through fear and follow authority instead of thinking for themselves. That's very exactly. true. The psychological mental malware that we talk about is definitely at play because. You know, without these really sophisticated techniques like NLP, for instance, that's one that's a pretty hot one right now. Uh, they've been using techniques like that for eons to, to try to control the thinking of people in order to have them go in a certain way. Uh, yeah, that we've was been really eons for eons. See, that was NLP right there, Dave. You just broke my state and then it, like totally derailed me. Because I was just looking at your price you tobacco. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the product placement, eh? Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't look like he's smoking tobacco, though, does he? <laughs> Honestly, every single time that he pulls that pipe up, I'm like, oh, what is he smoking? Because it looks like a little, like, you know what I mean? I, I always do that at but, parties. But, but, hey, but, dude. but sadly, it is tobacco. I honestly yeah. wish that it, that it was marijuana, don't get me wrong. I'm happy to admit that I really wish that it was weed, but sadly it is not. See, now this would be the future right here if uh, we had teleportation screens, like if we actually <laughs> had an app on it on our on our computer screens that uh, produced a hologram over the top of it with a, with a thin film uh, a wormhole, and you could actually just chuck a 50 bag into your screen and it, w- and it would come <laughs> through your screen on the other side and you'd just be like, oh, that's very nice. Thank you, bye. Or we could just <laughs> extract <laughs> the <laughs> cannabis leaf right off of Vinny's like, little, little superhero costume right there and just like grind it up and put it in, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Captain New Zealand. We've got some of the strongest weed in the world because uh, <laughs> thanks to harm technology, uh, most of our ozone layer has been depleted and cannabis plants have a natural uh, uh, mechanism for filtering out extra UV rays like that, and it means growing more high-density uh, THC crystals over the outside of the buds, which is the stuff that has the psychoactive effect and gets you stoned. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. There are, there are bright yeah, sides to uh, having a burn time of, like, three minutes when you walk out your door. <laughs> <laughs> It's weird, so strong, man, that the Jamaicans go, oh, don't smoke that shit, man. Well, incidentally, uh, New Zealand has the second highest reggae appreciation uh, per capita in the world, uh, second only to Jamaica. And uh, I spoke to a, uh, a Rasta uh, down here named uh, Tingyalo Ness, who did the uh, one of the theme songs for my show, um, and he said he believes it's because of cannabis that uh, and New Zealanders' great uptake of it that we have such a great, a uh, big reggae appreciation culture in this country. Hey, Kristen, it looks like Kristen's trying again. Uh, you Kristen, know, you, hear us? you know, Vinny, I would love to see a reggae episode of Flight of the Concords. That would be the the best thing ever. 
to see them like all decked out in the dreads and just being like, "Hey, man, do you oh, know what they do? You know what they call a Jamaican theme tanning salon? <laughs> what? Montana." <laughs> <laughs> Montana man. Montana man. Uh, that's funny. Because they'll give you a tan man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then we could go up to. Then we could go up to. Then we could go up to Minnesota man and fish in the lake that's got no fish with Colonel O'Neill man. Do you know what you call a uh, Jamaican system of government? <laughs> what? A monarchy. A monarchy. A monarchy. <laughs> monarchy, man. It's a monarchy. It's going to be ruled by mon. <laughs> I'm gonna pre I'm gonna pretend I'm smoking a weed now, man. Even though it's a bugler tobacco, man. I can use my imagination. That thing that the system does not want me to use. I'm being a bad, bad man. I'm not being a, a blind, obedient slave drinking the Kool Aid, man. I yeah. think that's why everyone's so in love with Bob Marley. You know, that, that idea. I think everybody's just in love with weed, uh, basically, just in general. And uh, 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 ultimately, I think every creature kind of likes weed. They had uh, some real problems when they tried to grow it in New Zealand uh, with uh, massive hemp fields and things like that. They got government permits to do these trial uh, hemp fields. And they, uh, they planted, I think, 10 hectares first. And about 9 hectares got eaten by uh, local wildlife birds and uh, um, animals <laughs> of different varieties. Um, and this is because it's it's got a lot of uh, really uh, great nutrition to the plant, the hemp seeds, the uh, highest omega-3s in, in the world. It's like a superfood, and mm -hmm. uh, everything has, has some kind of a uh, healing or positive property to it. Animals know it, people know it too. And it has a potential 50,000 industrial uses, which could more or less fulfill <coughs> every single need in a modern industrial society with all the resources it can uh, replace without destroying the planet. So naturally, it's illegal! Absolutely. Yeah, no kidding. As a matter of fact, um, with uh, marijuana... There is, there is no amount of, of THC that you could take into that has a fatal overdose level unless you're a cow because a cow has three stomachs and can process three stomachs worth of that all day long until they, they reach be, a fatal level. Yeah. But that uh, is, that's, that's, the, one. that's the only creature that can die from that. The only one. Yeah. It could be the, the utterly stoned cow. <laughs> Started no. singing, I shot the sheriff, but I didn't shoot the deputy. <laughs> you want to give us a little uh, preview of that song, man? Can you um, sing? I shot the sheriff, the sheriff, but I did not shoot the deputy. Oh, I, yeah. can't, I can't. I can't go. I can't go as high as Marley can. He can freaking. He can. He, he sounds like a freaking child. Um, you, know, yeah. you know. You know what I. You know what I'd like to hear right now. I would. I would. I would play the actual thing, but I can't because you have all of those DMCA copyright Nazis who sit there and go, "Oh, we're gonna listen to your video just to see if you used our music and if you." Yeah. <laughs> We That's shall just... strike you down. You know what I'd like to, 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 like to hear that. right now? I'd like to hear. I'd like to hear Bill Clinton talk about marijuana. Bill Clinton, are you around, Mr. Clinton? I'll smoke. I'll smoke. Hold on. I only what? exhaled multiple times. It was the best exhaling of my life. I exhaled so much I saw 12 colors of the rainbow and visited 57 states with Mr. Obongo, I mean Obama. Is Mr. Kissinger here? Maybe he can he can express his thoughts on that. <laughs> no, I can't really. My, uh, Marijuana can't. is the ultimate aphrodisiac. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you did that for me. 
Yeah, Rich does a great uh, Rich does a great Kissinger voice, except right okay, now. Okay, 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 okay. Or Kissinger is the the Kissinger most, probably one is... of the most unprofessional P sex we've done, which I enjoy these <laughs> most because they're fun. <laughs> um, okay, I'll give it a shot. Oh, oh, <laughs> Marijuana is great for improving social policy with the more or less fortunate countries where we fuck them over with arms restrictions and terrible trade deals. It makes the meetings where I stick my dick up Obama's asshole much more smoother. <laughs> and that's what the natural cannabis oil. But Vinny has never at any time feared the shaft of Mr. Kissinger. Yeah. <laughs> the key to the Kissinger voice is just try to embody, you know, if you have a, a concept of what pure evil sounds like, it is the template <laughs> by which all evil voices hear. Okay, no, think about it, think about it. What did the Emperor in Star Wars sound like? Henry uh -huh. Kissinger. What did Darth Vader sound like? Henry Kissinger. Execute Order 69. I want to fuck. As you wish, my master. Ew. I mean, no, seriously. You put a, put a, if, if you just had Henry Kissinger standing there, you know, doing the lightsaber battles, it would be kind of believable. It's like, this guy's evil. He's an overlord. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> Pretty straightforward, isn't it? Execute Order 420. I want to get high as fuck. <laughs> this will be great. It'll be like the time the Emperor came up with the perfect <laughs> the perfect formula for Star Wars dialogue. Something, something, something dark side. Something, 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 something complete. <laughs> Electronic traffic, you breach you should not. Roll the joint before you should have. <laughs> Master Yoda, I'm to be a Jedi right now. What the fuck do I do? Be? I need to be a Jedi right now. Well, tell him, Ben, I'm ready. I'm so ready. Eh, uh, boo boo, I, I smoke more than the average bear, eh? <laughs> and hey, when Mr. I like to drink, guys, to wipe their licking cabinets. Eh, hey, Mr. <laughs> Ra Miss, Miss, Mr. Ra Mr. Ranger, sir, stop Bogart in the bowl, eh? Pass that shit over this way? Yeah, you heard, Yogi. Don't Bogart it. Don't Bogart it! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kermit hey, hey, D. Frog here. Um, Big Bird, could you please pass the joint? Mm. Enough of the voices, sure, eh? Kermit. Yeah, I think like we exhausted entire, all uh, of our uh, awesome mm. voices. <laughs> Multi multi headed Hydra that we've got going on here. Like I can I can actually do a South African voice. It's uh it's quite rambunctious as it comes through the jowls. Uh, I can do the uh, Kenyan East African voice. I am from the city of Nairobi. I am We're going to sell you some uh, very good uh, East African tonic. Uh, it's very good. Uh, it's only a shilling for five pounds. I can do uh, an African deal. voice. Oh, you're doing that. You're doing that. Yeah, you're doing the click. I have. I have a joke about that actually. Um, like our cat, he, he's kind of like ginger, and he looks sort of like a lion, and uh, he's got this big fluffy mane. And uh, we just think, you know, we just picture him with a South African voice. You know, we used to be kings. We used to roam the savanna. We have our own language. It was called meow. <laughs> you know, in the Deviant Art post for this um, this stream, there's a little uh, little picture I got up. It says, "The professional world," and it says, uh, "The professional world is 
egocentric, sterile, heartless, cutthroat, shady, greedy, dishonest, uncompassionate, lacks empathy, ritual-driven, policy and protocol obsessed, robotic, inflexible, neurotic, pathological, disingenuous, domineering, Nazistic, and does not give one flying rat fornication about you or anyone else. So the next time someone says you're being unprofessional, take it as a compliment. You've just been accused of being human. Oh, damn. Well, when, I, um, <laughs> uh, when I get called crazy, I go, thank you. And they say, well, why are, you, why are you thanking me? And I said, well, if you'd called me sane in a world this fucked up, I'd be insulted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, look, look, craziness is something that people have just kind of uh, gotten used to over time. You know, there used to be things like laws against obscenity and so on and so forth, but now you've got strippers and music videos at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon when the kids get home from school. Oh, that's nice. That's not crazy at all. And you think to yourself, well, I, I really, really want to develop myself and enhance my soul and become a better person. So what I'll do is I'll spend the bulk of my life watching television and being vaguely entertained by mindless nonsense and spend the other part of my life going to a job that doesn't inspire me, doesn't motivate me, and isn't really going anywhere. And the other part of my life, the part that's left, is reserved for not sleeping very well. But that's, that's, the, but that's the normal, acceptable, professional thing to do, don't you know? Yeah, well, my, my, my uncle once came up to me and he says, you know, Vinny, my son, he's uh, never had a job in his life, and my, my uncle's quite wealthy. And uh, he got his first job the other day, and now he's saving $1,500 a month for for his new house. And I go, oh, okay, all right. That's uh, pretty successful there. I've created uh, 3,000 videos, 4,000 uh, uh, interviews on radio, appeared on hundreds of other people's radio shows and have more subscribers than the New Zealand Herald, which is the largest mainstream media outlet in New Zealand, and I've done that in a span of uh, about five years. Uh, and I don't have to work. I get enough donations to uh, survive and pay my bills. And in the last 90 days, I raised an extra $10,000 interest-free donations to buy some new equipment, right? So every man walks his own path, but it's not for you to just judge and measure somebody else's path using your own yardstick. Yeah, it reminds me of a saying, um, smart people seem like crazy people to dumb people. Shut up. You know what's Nobody really funny, Dave, video. was that that was actually something that um, our, our last radio show shenanigans, that, that person... She posted after she had that weird freak out mm -hmm. talking about uh, yours truly and you. <laughs> I was like, yeah. okay, crazy sometimes is actually crazy. Like, legitimately. Yeah. But the most of the that time, my philosophy. Crazy is just a, a, an ad hominem that gets like... I, I, have, the, I have the greatest uh, I don't assessment like for you, this. I'm going to call you crazy. Yeah. Well, uh, there is... What, what, would you, what would I say here? Um, anybody who thinks that all conspiracy theorists are crazy is clearly out of their mind. But anybody mm. who think, thinks that there's no such thing as a crazy conspiracy theorist is clearly out of their fucking mind. Because, <laughs> man, the truth not only makes you angry, uh, but it'll also drive some people nuts. They can't handle it. They don't think about it. They don't have mentors. They don't have anybody guiding them, helping them. They get rejected. They get ostracized. And all the, all the social fabric of their entire life disappears, usually in the space of maybe a, a year or two. And all of a sudden, you're all alone. You've got no support. You've got no help. Nobody cares about you. Nobody wants to listen to you. And you start to go nuts. Right, and and this is the thing: you can't just exit the matrix willy nilly. All right, even when Neo exited the matrix, he had somebody helping him, somebody to pick yeah. him up afterwards. Right, and there is no network like that. There's no school for being a truther. Any any seen a handbook? 
No, I haven't seen a, a freaking truth or handbook of how to okay. how to guide you and how to how to live life thoroughly and how to research things properly without letting them drive you freaking mad. The best conclusion I've come up with is you just need to make really bad jokes about it all the time because the only thing uh, uh, that's uh, worse than my jokes is the truth, ultimately. Hmm. So they're not that bad by comparison. That brings that brings us right back to something that I've I've seen that's all too common in the truth movement. I dare say that that most of the so-called truth and spiritual movement are more asleep than the actual sheep because they're sitting there saying, okay, because I have a few pieces of information about something. That means I've exited the matrix. I am God. I am immutable. No Jedi mind tricks can work on me. I'm unable to be deceived by anybody. And if you dare tell me that I'm human and could be subject to emotional or psychological co-opting or that any of my insecurities from the past could possibly affect me now, now that I've found this holy grail of a few peanuts of, of knowledge here, then you must be a, a shill or a, a, a government paid whatever or an Illuminati or blah blah because you're having the audacity to tell me that I am not God of the universe. I, I am not in the Matrix anymore. It's the stupidest saying, well, you know what? Now that I've found out that I have cancer, that means I magically no longer have cancer. But all you people that don't realize you have cancer, you still have the cancer. But I realize I have cancer, so magically it means I no longer have cancer. And the arrogance and the hubris goes so high, and that's why you have all this infighting and petty bickering and so on and so forth. And it's the same mind as the globalists. That's what the globalists do with each other. They taught us how to be them. And it's like Einstein said, you cannot find the solution to anything with the same thinking that created the problem. But society says, oh, if you use different thinking, you're delusional. You have to use the same thinking that created the problem. In it's order not to find thinking, it's consciousness. You're right. But yeah, I mean, it's but it's just you know these people don't even realize, and that kind of makes them bigger sheep than the sheep because at least the sheep have an excuse they don't know. I, but I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Um, I I think when when you wake up and you become you know a, a conspiracy theorist for lack of a better term, and I'm and I mean that in a positive way because it's actually a good thing to be a conspiracy theorist because it means that you believe powerful people who have a lot of influence actually use their power to maintain or grow their influence. If you're a conspiracy mm. theorist, you think there's no such thing as deception, backroom deals, corruption, or scumbaggery. <coughs> and uh, I know which one of those two sounds more naive and more insane. <laughs> and yeah. the thing about being interested in conspiracy, especially when it comes to professionalism, is that there's a wide spectra of different ways to go against the conspiracy. Like, okay, so... You get up in the morning and, and just think to yourself, how many different ways is the New World Order, the global conspiracy, actually <laughs> affecting you right then? Well, you've got dirty electricity, you've got fluoride in your water, you've got uh, chemtrails in the air, you've got so on and so forth. And that's just when you're waking up. Not, <laughs> not to mention all the products in your house that are made by some freaking sweatshop. Uh, and, and, and so on and so forth. Everywhere we look, we are completely saturated and surrounded by the products and the and the uh, knowing clutches and the brainwashing yeah. and the and the so on and so forth and it's it's quite that's, maddening. That's why, so that's why that's why the most important thing is to is to be authentic, be yourself, respect everybody else's rights to do the same because the main thing that keeps us screwed over is our lack of of respect for for everybody else. You know, we're sitting there thinking, oh, somebody else has a different point of view, so they're they're bad and screw them because they're not they're not kissing my ass. And none of any information about any conspiracy theories or anything or whatever may or may not be going on in the world even matters if we're not willing to have that that respect for each other as human beings. It doesn't mean you have to like everybody, but at the very least respect that, okay, you, just as you have the right to be you, other people have the right to be themselves, and just as you have the right to dislike somebody, they also have the right to dislike you and not want to deal with you. But instead, somebody's like, Oh, I don't like you. And you're like, how dare you not like me? And then there's like this whole butthurt thing that goes back and forth and petty bickering. People think that that world peace is everybody getting along and agreeing with each other. No, it's fucking not. Peace means no conflict. So 
if people are, are saying, okay, well, I'm only going to work with those I get along with and the people that I don't, I'm going to stay away from, that's peace because there's no conflict then. Instead, it's like, oh, you don't like me? Well, I have to beat your skull in for it because you're supposed to like me. Blah. You know. And as far as what most people think of as far as when they make the accusation of conspiracy theorists, I look at those people and I'm like, it sounds to me like they're saying, no, rich criminals can't do criminal things with their money. That's nuts. That's a conspiracy theory. There's no way that it's possible that criminals with a lot of money would use their money for criminal things. God, that's just <laughs> stupid. I'm yeah, like, yeah. what? The answers on the question, um, <laughs> and that's that's when you know that you're dealing with somebody who's actually programmed, you know. And and I, I think that there's uh, there's a lot of that going down. I was speaking with a, a, a mate of mine the other day about this, and I said, we've all got blind sides, even you and me. And he goes, yeah, but I know what my blind sides are. And I go, how do you know what your blind sides are if they're a blind side? Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. See, you don't, you don't. And um, the way I've uh, figured this out is if I have an emotional reaction to something, it's not cognition, uh, then I'm a, I've got brainwashing to deal with, right? My own personal yeah, exactly. brand of brainwashing. Everybody's got it. Uh, and there's two things. That's what, uh, that's, what that, Kater, uh, that's what Katerina specializes in, by the way, through the uh, through a kind of you know showing people that she's able to face her own brainwashing, so to speak, and unravel that, she acts as an example that helps others, and that that's what makes her really, really good for people to to consult with, because she acts as a very good mirror, because she's not afraid to face herself. Yeah. What, what well, do you have history, to say on all that, Katerina? Uh, I'm here. Yeah. I've just been listening. I was just going to say, uh, history makes hypocrites of us all eventually. <laughs> <laughs> um, something you say ten years ago, you, you just like look back at it and go, "What? God, you must be nuts." <laughs> yeah, Hi -hip hypocrites don't know they're they're hypocrites because once they know they're being hypocritical, they stop being hypocritical because you know that's they now have an awareness of it. Um, that was one of, one, of, one, of, one of the big things for me. yeah. That was one of the big things for me. The hardest things to face when you know people would you know say things or do things or whatever that would offend me, and then I realized that my reaction to them was doing the same thing to them that they were doing to me, and I didn't realize I was doing it. So it forced me to see. Wait a minute. If I didn't realize it, then they probably didn't realize it either, so now my ego can't point blame and go, oh, that's the bad guy, so my ego can't feel justified, and that, that was a really hard one, because the ego's addicted to feeling justified, and I had to face the idea of, like, wow, we're all doing the same thing to each other, no fault, no blame, so, yeah, that's just, like, a real hard one. You know, that well, is so important to talk about, because I think as people who are starting to explore these ideas of, you know, quote-unquote, not being judgmental, uh, you realize that there's really not, you can't be non-judgmental when you're judging yourself for being judgmental. It, it's kind of like this weird axiom where you have to kind of step off the hamster wheel and realize that there is really no fault, no blame, and, and all of these things that we've been taught to... Uh, to do in our culture is, uh, and in all the cultures really, we're all pretty much equally brainwashed from New Zealand yeah. to all the way over to the United States. Yeah. There there's is no, there's no fault and blame. There's just consequences for action. If, if exactly, you and the hammer. what I'm saying with that though, Dave, <laughs> is that when you're, it doesn't make me feel good to look upon someone else and judge them for a situation that they're going through. And mm -hmm. and I've learned that it's 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 really like this selfish thing that I do where, you know, for me, exerting that that hatred or that anger towards them, it's something that just makes me feel punished and and yucky about myself, and mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why I just kind of stopped doing it was because it's not that fun. And when I do catch myself doing it, I'm like, oh wow, all right, that's that's not making me feel any better or more of, of a productive human being. So I'm just going to like, you know, to drop, I'm just going to drop that because it's not something that's really necessary for me to do. And so totally. many people are, uh, 
they the, in the spiritual community they they start getting mad at themselves about you know how critical they are, how complainy they are, how whatever negative adjective you want to use, how whatever <laughs> they're being in that moment. I'm like, all right, well you're perpetuating it right then and there in that moment. Mm -hmm. You know, we're humans and there are these layers upon layers upon layers of fears and, and insecurities and neuroses that have just been crammed down inside of us and I swear I'm finding new ones inside of me every day and that's just the stuff that I talk about on Facebook. It's like there's even more and, and you, you just get to face them, you get to deal with them, they get to come up and look at them and they're like okay I can have more compassion for myself in this moment because there's like even more of my craziness and so when other people are doing stuff that seems irrational or looks crazy or it doesn't make sense to me. I can I can realize that they're just operating with within the the parameters that they've grown up in and and that they have been exposed to. It seems to me that uh, there's a lot of uh, things going down, like with specifically uh, uh, political correctness nowadays. You you notice that. Mm -hmm. Kind of like af afraid to express certain ideas, afraid to say certain words, afraid to think uh, certain things, you know, because it's like, oh, oh, my God, you can't think that. Um, and yeah. that's because political correctness is just intellectual colonialism and psychological fascism for the creation of thought crime, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's Steve Hughes, uh, the comedian, who said that. And uh, I, I remember there was this meme the other day. It had a, uh, a Down syndrome uh, little girl co uh, saying with it holding up a thing that says, please don't use the word retarded, full stop. I am a beautiful person. I am Isabella, exclamation mark. And uh, it was quite funny because everybody sort of gets offended about this. And uh, then one of my mates <laughs> pointed out, uh, I think you've got to stop jumping to retarded conclusions about someone on a Facebook meme. For all you know, <laughs> she could very well have been put up to holding that little message. One can be damn sure this little girl wrote all that without any spelling or grammar errors and posted it up on Facebook all by herself and also sure that she wasn't put up to it by someone else because the first thing a little girl thinks of when being offended is to write it up on a big poster, have a picture taken of her holding it, smiling, and then post it to the masses via the social media. Media. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, that. Plus, not like the people uh, behind that bit of grooming are not doing it for the some agenda of their own. No, let's assume this little girl with learning difficulties decided upon a media campaign all by herself. And I was like, oh, damn, there's some logic there. I mean, having not thought of that myself actually makes me feel a little bit retarded. <laughs> 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 you know, and to all the people, you know, running around telling everyone to not use certain words because it offends you. How about how about this? All right, how about instead of trying to control what everyone says and thinks, maybe you could perhaps listen to what they say and interpret what they actually mean instead of getting offended arbitrarily. Let's well, say, for example, they let's say, for example, they mean to cause you offence. Then get offended. Go by all means. But if no one intended to cause offence, and they weren't even a participant in, in the conversation anyway, then just kindly mind your own business and stop trying to control everything. Sticks and stones will break my bones, but words are way fucking deadlier and you need to spend most of your life preemptively making sure no one uses them against you because you're obviously too weak to handle that shit. Or at least I think that's how the rhyme goes. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I, I agree with you, Vinny, and I think part of the value of removing the judgments and all of that is, and, and honestly even stepping out of that paradigm is when you see something in the world that really like makes you physically upset inside of you, I mean that's, that's the piece where people need to take responsibility and be able to be like, yo, okay, this is really hitting on a hot button for me, what is it? that is making me feel this way like was it something that happened way in the long time ago and I need to look at it and face it and clear it and deal with it I mean that is the space where that mm. kind of stuff needs to happen but the thing that happens now is people don't know how to under they don't understand how to deal <clears throat> with all of these triggers and 
they now are trying to be these political correctness warriors and being like, well, don't say that that offends me. Don't use the word fat. Don't use the word retarded. Don't use the word <clears throat> gay. Like, but they haven't cleaned up some of their own emotional baggage that's surrounding yeah, yeah. those words. If I may, if I if I may interject briefly, um, you all have seen this this image already, except for Vinny, and I will include it in you know when I after this is this is done, and you know I advertise this post around. But just for the moment, there's this this graphic that I made called "Let's Offend Everybody at Once," and it's to make fun of all this politically correct bullshit. And I just I just sent you that that link, and I just kind of wanted to get your your reaction to that if you could click that right away. Oh, no, I've, I've already I've already seen that one. Yeah, so it's, it's oh, like no, you it's like gay na gay Nazi Zionist stoners. Yeah, I, mean, I get it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny. Um, oh, and, you, you know, I, I didn't I didn't know if you've seen that one yet already because I know you're busy and you you've got ten zillion things to do. So I wasn't sure if you had seen that one, but I did make that. Indeed, good on you, bro. Um, well, we're back on the on the concept of the that usage of the word retarded and offending people. I mean, I never use the word uh, retarded to describe people who are mentally handicapped. You know, I only use it to describe people who are of complete sound mind and intelligent, but act like complete fucking idiots anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that's yeah. retarded. You know. <laughs> Uh, and, and and this is the thing as well. I mean, I, I like the uh, topics where people get emotionally involved and get really angry and and kind of uh, upset with me. Not because I like that and I'm sadistic or anything like that, but because I know that those are the most interesting and important topics to talk about, those things that you have an emotional reaction over. I like talking about racism. I like talking about sexuality. I like talking about politics. I like talking about spirituality, right? And these are the things that are almost like taboo topics. You're like, like you go to a haircut, they're not going to be talking about that, you know. So I reckon it would be great to have a truther haircut studio. In fact, uh, a whole truther industry really needs to <laughs> pop up, don't you think? You could go to a truther grocery store and like guaranteed no fluoride, no GMO, no 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 nothing like that used in the in the growing process. Certified aluminium, barium, and strontium free produce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's my. let's let's fight racism with bigotry. Check your privilege. Okay. <laughs> yeah, for me, oh, Vinny, I really uh, but, enjoy. But people don't realize that the bigotry does not bear any fruit. <laughs> uh -huh. I've been experimenting with this idea of really being more controversial lately, and today I actually posted a picture of myself in my swimsuit, which is like my little two-piece, and. The amount of people that were commenting and liking on that because of the, the message that was attached to it was really interesting because it was a message about, you know, me being honest about, you know, body image struggles that I've had for my entire life and it's just something that a lot of people think about and they don't really discuss. Like, and so people will talk to me and they'll be like, wow, you're so brave and blah, 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 blah. But it's because people don't feel comfortable enough talking about these things or sexuality or racism or um, what are some of the fun ones I like talking about you know the Jobs, disease, income, illness, ethnicity. ethnicity like some of these things that people yeah. have very strong emotional ties to they they kind of harbor it but you know these are the same people who are dealing with them and they're posting cat pictures on Facebook and they're not actually so talking cool. about it uh, or the or like, the list or the you list can have a or the list of many, many reasons as to why nobody should give a shit in either direction about the Confederate flag. Yeah, well, this is what I was talking about before, is that you can choose to either, you have either an emotional or an intellectual reaction. Like, let's say, for example, Obama says quantitative easing is going to be good. Now, I don't have an emotional reaction when I scream out, You're a lying scumbag! You're working for bankers and you're going to try and destroy the United States! You know, that's not an emotional reaction. I've, I've, I've intellectualized the response and I know exactly what it is and I'm backing it up with evidence. But if I say, He's a black man! I don't believe him because of that. <laughs> then that's an emotional <laughs> response. <laughs> that I haven't thought through properly yet. <laughs> I don't have the evidence. You know, just say, oh, wait, wait, actually, no, he's 90% Arab. What, what, the, what, what the fuck, man? It's not politically correct to be racist against niggers. You shut up, you racist. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, everybody's uh, talking about being militant about it, militant about it, right? As if it's being in the now. military and killing people and being real aggressive and stuff like that and starting conflict is a good idea to advance your cause, right? Oh, you know what's going to make everybody accept me and stop hating me? Trying to kill them and trying to berate them all the time about how they're racist when they haven't even said a fucking thing to me yet. Yeah, I'm going to be a militant black guy. I'm going to be a militant Maori. I'm going to be a militant white guy. I'm going to join the Ku Klux Klan. All people who think that they're racist, the one thing that defines their personality and who they are is freaking stupid. Okay? It doesn't matter who you are. If your race is so important to you that you think that that makes you as a human being more important than all the other human beings of all the different shades and colors on the rainbow, then you're a bit of an idiot, son. Okay? And I don't mind saying it. And it's just because of many, many uh, reasons, but primarily one reason. You don't love or are friends with people of different races. You are not exposed experience with people of different cultures on a consistent basis from the day that you're brought up. I have been, and that has allowed me to change from mm -hmm. what could have possibly been a uh, white, upper, middle class, uh, racist, redneck, uh, right-wing party voting scumbag <coughs> with some uh, enormous bank account and no respect for the human condition, or I actually turn into a real human being who sees other human beings as if they're human beings you know saying that you're black you know, is merely a comment on on uh, what you look like right i always found it very yeah. interesting that there's this um uh phenomenon in the united states about there's a black male there's a black male he's got a gun he's armed and dangerous a black male a black male it's like jesus and you and you wonder why uh it, it's just not safe to be black in america <laughs> <laughs> because people have gotten really, really stupid and they've decided to classify all people of one race as a danger, as a threat, as, so, as something like that. This, this fear through unfamiliarity. And if you were more familiar, if you had more friends, if you had more uh, uh, relationships with the, with the girls of that culture, your perspective changes pretty quickly as soon as you've got your cock in them. All right? Uh, it, it's just that simple. But but Vinny, you forgot to cover your cock with raspberry jam. You can't you can't forget these things. Well, yet again, I want to. Well, I was also, in a rush, bro. I also <laughs> want to be fair. Um, as of late, I have noticed that it's you know not to say that it doesn't happen in the white community. I mean, it kind of you know it's been a back and forth, extreme kind of pendulum that's been going on for quite some time, but. As of lately, the black community hasn't been doing themselves any favors by, you know, saying we need to kill police, we need to go around, you know, uh, scaring white people, intimidating them. I mean, that really doesn't do them any favors either. You know? Yeah, I made, I made a PSEC video um, on that topic called Black Half Lives Antimatter. Um. <laughs> I have nothing against but, blacks. It's just, you know, it's kind of, it's... It's kind of uh, what I would say hypocritical. You know, they walk around in their black Nazi uniforms and the Black Panthers waving their little African pride flag saying we have a right to do this, motherfucker. But when you pull a Confederate flag out, they, they call for you to be lynched from a tree and have the media pick you to pieces because, <clears throat> oh, that's white supremacy. Oh, that's the only mm. meaning behind mm. that. Oh, 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 you evil. You know yeah. what, Rich? Um, Idiots uh, and Rich. dicks. Okay, these these are the two these are the two real parts of humanity that I don't like. Idiots and dicks. Okay, dicks don't treat you nice because they're dicks. Idiots don't understand what you're talking about because they're idiots. And uh, what the thing about dicks and idiots is, is they love little differences between people and they get everybody to fight amongst themselves and to derail them from actually having real understanding, real debate, real comprehension about what people's coming from. And, and then they the start, then they start, breeding, then they to, start breeding with each other and there's a hybrid dick idiot and those are even worse. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's uh, an idiot. <laughs> And, uh, there you go. A dickiet. <laughs> An idiot. Yeah. It's, it it sounds, sounds almost uh, Shakespearean, almost uh, Trojan. <laughs> um, <laughs> almost Plato. And uh, the idiot. <laughs> Trojan. 
Trojan for greater pl- for for great greater pleasure when your brain's not working. Yeah, <laughs> because uh, obviously, if you're an idiot, uh, you, you're only seeking pleasure of one kind or another. Um, speaking and drink of sp- lots of Dick Insider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's that's got to be good for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm very, I'm very open to the idea of Dick Insider, and uh, but not when it's GMO. You, you, you what, what? Not, not if it's, it's GMO. GMO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, GMO knob. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Come on. Okay. Totally derailed this. I had like a train of thought. <laughs> nah, it's gone. I fucked it up. Well, you know, I, I, I told Rich a while back. I've got I got a, a perfect solution to resolve racism. Unfortunately, it could never be implemented. But here's my idea: um, you, you take all the people that that are that are racist, and you offer them a nice little little plane ticket to some remote island somewhere, to where you tell them, hey, you, you can you can legally go kill all the people over there that that you don't like, that that so on and so forth, and they'll be like, yeah, bro, sign me up. Let's kill me some niggers or this or that or whatever. So you take all the people from all these different parts of the world that hate each other, you put them on this one island, you give them lots and lots of guns, and let the problem solve itself. Yeah, yeah, but the problem is they normally just go, well, why should I go somewhere else? I, I want my house, and I want my land, and I want my family, and my Christian traditions, and so on and so forth. Ah, but Everybody remember, if you, offer them, for... but if you offer them an all-expenses-paid first-class flight over there, everybody thinks they're entitled. Gimme, gimme, gimme. So that, that appeases their no. sense of, oh, it's being given to me. I mean, theoretically. Me. Theoretically, <laughs> it, it might work, but here's the two impediments to it. Number one, nobody's going to pay for that, for all the first-class expenses. And uh, number two, uh, the voting blocks of uh, racist, redneck scum in all of our countries are absolutely va- invaluable uh, to the very cynical, uh, false left and right-wing parties uh, that we uh, have entertaining us as little puppets mm-hmm. on parade. So... And, and in fact, there were some email documents that were leaked uh, uh, to a journalist here in New Zealand named Nikki Hager about his, um, excuse me, the party, uh, the National Party here, which is our equivalent to the Republicans, except they're blue instead of red. And what they were doing is they were looking very cynically at the whole voting public and talking about them as if they were idiots, as if they were rednecks, and how easy they are to manipulate by using race baiting and things like this. Right? comes out, emails get published, and uh, they, their campaign gets derailed. And then not long afterwards, on uh, the next election campaign, uh, maybe two later, he gets another leaked uh, bunch of emails. It turns out that the politicians that are high up in the National Party have been recruiting uh, bloggers to do their dirty business for them, to uh, harass people, to start up blogs and, and stuff, uh, defaming, disparaging, attacking people's personality, their character, whipping up uh, uh, attacks on, on everything about their life, you know, and all their works to discourage people from ever getting involved. And it's just dirty politics, mate. Ultimately, it corrupts mm-hmm. fucking everything, doesn't it? Because people have agendas that they aren't willing to sway because they aren't actually dedicated to the truth. They're dedicated to their own version, uh, an ideology. There aren't any versions mm-hmm. of the truth. The truth is just, you know, there's one thing. That's what we've proven. That's what we see. It's, that's, it's absolutely true. And everything else becomes opinion. Now, if you have an emotional stake in your opinion rather than your emotional stake in other people, and your, your planet, your country, etc., your rights, that you will viciously defend if somebody tries to attack them, you're going to wind up losing sooner or later because there's only two types of people in this world, those who want to be left alone and those who won't leave you alone. I thought there were ten types of people in the world, the ones who know binary and the ones who don't. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> okay, I've got about yeah. 25 minutes until my next show is on my show. Uh, so if anybody wants to tune into that, 
thevinnieeastwoodshow.com and uh, americanfreedomradio.com are the uh, the websites so you can listen to that live and uh, check it out on YouTube as well. Just Google Vinnie Eastwood or uh, uh, Mr. News, Guerrilla Media, and you should be able to find me on those little puppies as well as on Facebook, of course. But uh, anyway, we still have a few minutes uh, left in the broadcast. I, I wondered uh, where we were going to. Now, subject is yeah, professionalism, it's, it's, all right? It's, it's, and, it's, eight, it's 8.36 uh, Central Time right now, and we're going till 9 as far as I know. So, yeah, we've only got a little I know, bit I, I go live on my show at 9. Um, so uh, I'll be, like, jumping off and then, and then jumping into that, and I'll probably need maybe the last 10 minutes or something like that to, to prep for that's, it. That's, a, that's okay. That's all good. I understand. No biggie. Yeah, good. sorry, because we scheduled this to my time schedule, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, apparently we did. That's all good. All, all else I was going to bring up about what you were saying is the Electoral College in the United States. Um, it's even admitted in, in Constitution class, and I was taking that when I was a kid. It's like, wait a minute. How does our vote count if all the people's votes goes through the Electoral College and these capitalist, industrialist scum fucks there can go, oh, we don't like how the people voted, so we're just going to flip it around to how we want and then spit it out. Um, people talk about, oh, Bush rigged the election and all that. Well, yeah, he did, but the Electoral College has been has made every election rigged since way back. <laughs> it's like getting put in a constitution camp. <laughs> Yeah, you know, make sure you have yes. make sure you have your co your concentration in your constitution. I mean, you're a slave, but at least you got a job, you know. <laughs> yeah. And and I, I figured that that's uh, uh, one of the things. I'm employer phobic. Okay, so any time when I feel like I'm about to get a job, I start freaking out, bro. Like neuron panic attacks and stuff like that. I diagnose <laughs> myself with it by um, by you know a round of hands. Vinny, do you think you're employer phobic? Yes, I do. Okay, we've now officially got as much scientific evidence as every other mental disorder that's currently diagnosed by a group of ruthless sociopaths who want to who want to uh, flood everybody with pharmaceutical drugs. I'll just use weed. Thank you very much. That makes me that makes me a lot calmer and makes me have a lot more fun when things are really really bad. <laughs> you're right because weed will get you through times with no money better than money will get you through times with no weed and the <laughs> problem with this is, is that you can never work for anyone ever again you can only work with people and you have a lot of disagreements uh, with uh, individual activists and, and radio show hosts you know you, you have differences of opinion um, you both know that you don't have the facts but one believes one way and one and one believes the other way and maybe only one of you knows that you don't really have the facts and the other person thinks that they do but they actually don't and you get all these conflicts going on and how to resolve them by heading them off at the past it's on the points you agree that you can come together and collaborate and uh, work together but uh, it's on the points that you disagree that you can choose to table those uh, for a later discussion. It's like, <clears throat> hey, um, when should we have the discussion about whether or not 9/11 was uh, with uh, nukes or space beams or uh, uh, thermite or, or, some, or something like that? Um, maybe we'll just save that for the time after we've overthrown the ruthless criminal sociopathic scumbaggery motherfuckers that are ruling the earth and, do and dominating every form of human life. Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll have a discussion after that happens. All right, and we'll go, hey. We're no longer under the ruthless threat of extermination and enslavement. What should we talk about? I don't know, bro. Let's get into some lively discussions about stuff we disagreed with all those years but never approached to it because, hey, we were too busy preoccupied uh, trying to save the human race from extermination. Yeah, oh, sounds like a brilliant idea to me. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I mean, I look at it this way. Probably, you know, most if not all of these these theories about how stuff like that happened, they're probably all right at the at, at, at the same time. But all of that is completely irrelevant because until we can all come together and say, okay, we all agree that it was an inside job. So you know, let's go have some inquiries in our days in court, and you know, drag some people into jail and and really investigate and and look at what happened. You know, and, and then we can let the truth, you know, have itself, you know, come out in, in the wash, so to speak, because then you'll actually be doing investigation. No, instead of that, let's just 
bicker and bitch about how they may or may not have done it, which is completely irrelevant and does not actually take the people responsible and put them on a desert island or jail or in front of a firing squad or hanging from a, from a tree and not in the way that Katarina describes psychiatrists hanging from trees, but the one that requires the hemp necktie. You know, whatever's going to be done, let's all, you know, oh, let's, let's, let's not do all that. Let's just bicker and bitch and say, oh, no, it was, it was, it was fake planes. No, it was laser guns. No, it was this. It was that. You know, they, they probably had radioactive thermite with a laser pointer with fake planes and real planes with a Muslim on, on, the, on, the, on the top standing next to an Israelite screaming a la Ekbar while the Israelite was punching them in the face as the buildings came down. Who gives a fuck? Let's just go get the bad, let's go get the bad that's guys. Actually let's, still, I, uh, that's yeah. actually still more believable than the official story. <laughs> I figured out the perfect the perfect formula, bro. You know how you can teach somebody that 9-11 is an inside job in under 30 seconds? All right. You say, okay, have you ever had a barbecue before? Yeah. Okay. The barbecue on for like maybe an hour or something? Yeah. Okay. Did the grill melt? No. Did the barbecue explode into particleized fucking dust? No. 9-11 was an inside job. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and and has anything ever ever fallen at free fall speeds, completely defying physics, unless there was a rigged controlled uh, demolition going on? You know, I mean, it's like the obvious is there, so okay, it's there for whatever our reasons. Each individuals, we can all say, okay, it's an inside job. Fine, we can all agree on that. So then, why don't we take that, put all the rest aside, and go do something constructive, like go round up the people responsible and have our day or days at Nuremberg Part Two and whatever else we need to do instead yeah, of I mean, you know everybody's a, a for all fan of sequels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Nuremberg too. <laughs> hey, yeah. that'd be a, that'd be a great uh, thing actually. We'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll just start a website and we'll call it Nuremberg Two. And uh, essentially, the the goal is to do a class action lawsuit against every single war criminal that's walking the earth today. That's part yeah. of the New World Order control structure, and get them all to be interviewed and and uh, get them to rat on each other and turn it into this big feeding frenzy of sharks. You know, <laughs> it'll be it'll be freaking hilarious. Hey, let's call it Nuremberg Two Genesis and spell Genesis with a Y. Then it'll be trendy. Yeah, it'll certainly trend on Google+. Plus. <laughs> <sighs> All right, right. Well, I, I unfortunately have to uh, have to leave you here. I've got uh, a show to prep for. That's, and, that's uh, all good. Well, thank you for, thank you for uh, coming on this hangout with us, and thank you for being extremely unprofessional, thus proving that you're not a psychopath, the part of the parasitic ruling class. And, um, There's it's plenty of unprofessional psychopaths, bro. There's a spectrum of them. Some of them are douchebags, some of them are idiots, some of them are, uh, but they're all scum. <laughs> 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 all right, so ladies and gentlemen, if, you, if you're tuning into this uh, this show, PSEC, uh, live in the next 15 minutes, you can go to AmericanFreedomRadio.com or the Vinnie Eastwood Show.com. That's Vinnie with a Y because it's the most important question. And Eastwood, like, go ahead, make my news. <laughs> and uh, listen into the show. We'll have a few laughs, have a good rant, and uh, it, it'll be uh, good for your time and uh, wonderful for your emotional well being and your brain places and your sterility as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> and don't forget to have a nice big help, big glass of uh, Dickens cider, because every woman loves a little Dickens cider now and then. Well, preferably not a little one. It reminds me of Austin, uh, Austin Powers when the little mini me clone was talking to that chick, and he's like. Are you a clone? And she's like, no. Are, are 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 you sure? And she's like, yeah. And she's like, so you've never, so you're sure you you you've never had a little clone in you? And she's like, I'm sure. And he's like, would you like to? Oh, yeah. Cool, brother. Classic. I'll catch you later, man. Cheers for the cheers yep. for the show. Peace out. Bye bye.
and now it's down to um, to just you and me. I don't know where Katarina went or why, or if she had technical difficulties or whatever. She kind of dropped out and was unresponsive on Facebook or anything else. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll later we'll have to we'll have to troubleshoot what the heck happened with the um, with the the Skype uh, Google link here because um, it's it's always worked until today. So I'm not sure what's up with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had to we tried to get Kristen on the call at least thrice and that didn't work. Yeah. Actually, she tried to get herself on the call. I didn't know if she was going to be on or not, and then she tried calling us. Yeah. Yeah, she tried calling us twice. Then she tried to get on via Google Hangout. Hangout several times. Yeah. I think it was two or, two or three attempts she made, and it just didn't click in because her wireless uh, the only availability. Know, the, only, the, only, the, only, the only times I noticed were a couple of times, so... But of yeah, it was it, it was about three. My browser was totally freaking out. It was like not wanting to work. It was like you know freezing, and then it would go to the blue screen. He's dead, Jim, and then it would shut down, <laughs> and then it would start back up, and then it would just yeah. break, and you know it would just do all kinds of sorts of weird shit. So well, um. Any anything else that uh you have to add to the uh the topic about uh professionals and and all that frickin' neurosis? Not really. I mean I'm just kinda of sitting here, you know well, yeah, yeah. nothing I really feel that I need to say or add. I mean, all the perspectives given well said and well thought out perspectives. And we just have fun, that's the main thing. Yeah, a pretty good hangout despite all the the bizarre technical glitches that shouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't say for sure that anybody was absolutely fucking with us, and I can't say that they weren't. I, I don't know. All, all I know is that, you know, the connection should have worked and it didn't, so I'm going to have to kind of troubleshoot that and get to the bottom of that. Because um, I, I, I'm not going to discount that it, it might be something in a configuration on my end or whatever else it could have been. Um, I'm a I'm a computer tech, so you know I don't like making assumptions. I like looking into all the uh, all the possibilities and you know troubleshooting that and test that and you know see what conclusions that I come to. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess um, that is it then. So um, I mean, obviously we can stay on here and talk after the broadcast, but um, for now, just. Uh, Catch you later, everybody. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna end this. And thanks for uh, thanks for listening, watching, whatever. And uh, catch y'all next time. And in roughly ten minutes or so, be sure to uh, to tune into the uh, the Vinny Eastwood show. So you've got uh, about ten minutes or so to you know change out your drink, use the bathroom, uh, you know grab your popcorn, uh, whatever it is you're gonna do. So um, on that note, catch y'all later. <laughs>